and I got up too fast, and I found my heart going, and I was freaking out a little bit. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. So, where should I start? After deconditioning myself from food, I've ended up embarking a little bit on a water fast, not for any pretty long period of time. Today, I'm just having myself some tea. Okay, I've got another glass over there and some on the stove. And yesterday I did a enema and I did a juice fast. For the past couple of weeks actually, I've been juicing organic foods, which is cool because it only takes a couple of weeks to get pesticides out of your system. So I've been eating non-genetically modified vegan produce recently, alongside slowly and gradually deconditioning myself from food, as you've seen so far, hopefully, within the previous videos. But today's video is about what I discovered last night. When people fast, no matter what they're abstaining from, fear will set in. And it's not, it could be because of the fact that they're afraid of not eating if they're fasting for the first time. Like I used to be afraid of, you know, just like dying or having some sort of heart palpitation and having a heart attack. My mum finding me on my floor, falling over and hitting my head and not getting back up. When you become afraid, your body becomes extremely sensitive to emotion when you're fasting. So naturally, you'll shift into a flight scared endocrine system state of being where your adrenals kick off and your heart races. You get lightheaded because you're breathing really fast. And the fact of the matter is, is that if your body isn't in the need for an excessive amount of oxygen, because it's not digesting food, then your body doesn't need that much oxygen whilst you're fasting. So <laughs> think about it like this. If you don't need that much oxygen anymore, and you're hyperventilating a little bit, or you're panicking out a little bit, your body's gonna get too much oxygen. And then you get up and you get lightheaded. Not only that, but your blood pressure goes up because you're panicking. Now, how can I say this for sure? For certain? Last night, I was in bed and I got up too fast and I found my heart going and I was freaking out a little bit. And the freak out was involuntary. It was a part of my subconscious mind that was panicking because subconsciously we all freak out. We just don't notice it because we cover it up with food. Any worries throughout the day, if anyone annoys you and you're holding on to it, that's causing some amount of stress within the body and that causes you to freak out and panic a little bit minutely if you're not covering up that slight panic attack by food, that emotion, that uncomfortability by distracting yourself with TV even, or Facebook. So, I noticed that whenever I would get a crappy thought, you know, my sister came over the other day and she didn't take off her shoes in my house, that was enough, <laughs> seriously. And I wasn't angry or anything like that. It just upset me a little bit, because I could tell by her demeanor, it was like she, she wanted to keep them on despite the fact that I mopped this floor over and over again so that I can walk barefoot, you know? And I, I should have said something, but I just, you know, it's just one of those things. Luckily enough, most people took their shoes off and that's not going to happen next time. Less on that. But just that thought was enough to shake my mood a little bit, just a little bit. And because I hadn't eaten, my energy was so malleable 
then I started to panic a little bit and I got up and I noticed that I got really dizzy really fast and I just wanted to lay there in my bed. So all of last night for hours, I was going through every issue that I had that was bugging me and I was doing previous meditations that I had created myself throughout the previous years before my last fast to better change my perception on what was going on within the past that used to bother me so that it no longer bothers me, thus keeping me in a state of calmness and peace. This is my next thing I want to talk about, guys. You all want heaven on earth, right? Makes sense, but a lot of people don't want it even if it's there. And I can only say that based on my own psychology. <laughs> Last night, I found myself coming up with scenarios in my mind, ones which were just terrible and that were making me feel stressed. And there were little things, you know, like what if my post doesn't come on time? Or what if I want to reschedule a booking and I can't? Or what if the post comes and it's broken? Or what if I can't get a refund? Little things like that. And I was playing out these scenarios in my head that were causing me to stress out. But then I took a breather. And I just looked around in my environment. I noticed the fact that, you know, my life isn't like that. Circumstances in my life aren't that bad. Matter of fact, they're not bad at all. They're perfect. There's nothing wrong with my life. If I just use these and I just look around, you know, think about it. All this, all these politicians and stuff that you're seeing on TV, all this news, scarcity news, which you don't even know if it's right because they're just reading a prompt that somebody else wrote. So even newscasts are actors, you know, casts casting a spell on the public. <laughs> so when somebody is telling me, all right, you're ignoring the problem, you're, you're living in your own wonderland, your own heaven, and you don't realize the outside is hell. I tell them, I say, okay, well, turn off your TV, turn off your Facebook news feed, turn off everything and just look at your life. Where are these problems that you're trying to force me to believe in? Where are they? In your life, in your reality, where do they exist? And the matter of fact, you know, they're not there. So your life, really, your actual life, when you're not under the delusion that what's going on somewhere else in the world, possibly, is happening right now in front of you, your life is actually pretty good. The thing is, is how many of you want to accept that? Because last night I kept reassuring myself that you know, my life's pretty awesome. <laughs> and I'm constantly getting reassurance about that because I first noticed this, well, first with the TV, I first noticed it when I was like 16, because that's when I first stopped watching music videos because of all the arts and everyone showing too much flesh. I noticed that, you know, the music industry decided from going, from showing talent to going to showing flesh and a hidden message within the movements of the music industry, which was, you want this, but you don't have it. And it causes people to fantasize about another reality that isn't currently existing and then they get aroused and so forth and they wonder why most of the public if not most of the entire world is sexually frustrated <clears throat> so that's when I first stopped watching music videos not long after that I stopped watching the news I was 17 so it was a year after that or it might have been in the same year just after my birthday because I managed to influence my mum into also not watching the news because she would panic and I'd say, Mom, look outside, the sun is out. You know, it's beautiful outside, and yet you're freaking out. Like, it's not real right now. It's, it's not a part of your existence, so why are you panicking? And then she stopped watching the news. <laughs> and I thought it was pretty cool. So we can change our family's outlook on things. And then, not long after that, it was after I became self-employed and I was worried about finances, 
I constantly kept getting reassurance that I was abundant because every time I'd have a thought in my head that was doubting my ability to achieve anything, I'd get an email or I'd get paid instantly. And ever since then, and that was like three years ago, I have had this constant battle, which I've been winning easily when it comes to me knowing the fact that I am capable of doing things. Better put, when it comes to noticing the rhythm of my life and how things always turn out well for me. There was even a moment in the airport once where I thought that my bags were going to get checked and I was going to get stopped and not allowed on board to the Bahamas. And as I was in line queuing up, seeing all these sketchy people, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to get caught, I'm going to get caught. Caught for what? In my head, I was replaying an episode of some sort of TV show on, on I was going to say online, but on TV, on Sky, where they were constantly patrolling the airports and stopping people and arresting them. And that was going through my head over and over again. And I honestly believed for a moment that that was my reality, that TV was showing me how the world works and functions, but it's not real. And as soon as I got to that desk, he looked at the front of my passport, didn't even open it, smiled, gave it to me, said, okay, you can go through it. Didn't even stamp it. I was like, really? And ever since that moment, I've trusted in the fact that my life has a certain theme. Everything is stressless. And I thought I completely expunged any and all doubt of that fact until last night when I was undergoing the water fast or the slight juice transitioning into the water fast, where I got access to deeper levels of my, my character that I was snuffing out by means of food or TV. How long have we been talking for? 13 minutes, I'm gonna keep going. I might make a part two, because I learned a lot of stuff last night about things. I need to get it all out on camera. So then what I did was, I started to recall moments of when I, was researching other fasters, fasteners, and they would say meditation and prayer, right? I've never told anyone this before. Matter of fact, anyone as of late, the last people I told this to were my mom and my dentist. <laughs> 